worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging seas. My God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross and he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Cause we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We're gonna shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We're gonna shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise. Amen.
Yeah. 
one we serve. Good morning. We're excited to have all of you guys here with us, those of you here with us in person, and good morning to those of you that are with us online. And right now, if I can turn your attention to the screen, we'll check out this week's announcements. <laughs> ah, smells like the dew on a rosebud on the fourth Thursday of the second month. She struts in like a dime that hasn't been rolled yet. And I tell her, baby, you're beautiful. You belong in a museum. She hops. No, I don't. Ha, I look ridiculous. Doll face. You make me blush like the horizon when it sees flamingos driving my Chevelle. Confused at my charming remark, she says, what? Why would a flamingo be driving a car? Exactly, honey. Impatiently, she says, that doesn't make sense. Are you going to do the announcements or not? I smile with a shiver running down me. Ah, I love it when she caps the attitude. Then I tell her, VBS, we need people to sign up. There are plenty of different jobs. So if you don't want to be a teacher, that's okay. But we need people to sign up in the atrium. Yeah, and the uh, K-Cup giveaway is still going on. So make sure you sign up today. Later that day, she looks at me asking, did you know the prayer walk is today at 1.30? How did I get so lucky? Beauty and brains. You're one of a kind, baby. She raises an eyebrow and says, What? That has nothing to do with the prayer wall. Oh, but it does. Because that leads me to the last announcement. Senior Sunday is May 16th. So, if they want to have their child represented as a graduating senior, they need to come talk to you before May 9th. She yells at me with determination in her voice. What? That's not a lot of time. Baby, baby. That's plenty of time. Don't worry about it. They say to try and calm her down. She rolls her eyes and asks, Is that all? No. They need to get connected with us on the web. She has. Yeah, like our YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and the website. <laughs> like I don't know that. Ha! What she doesn't know is I already followed the church on the World Wide Web. Walking out, I suffer from talking and say, No. Don't cry, baby. I'll be back next week. I'm glad we have some creative people. I tell you what, uh, I want to share with you a few things before we get into our time of prayer. I want to remind you how you can let us know how we can pray for you. There are several ways you can do that. One way is this little slip of paper uh, that's in the back of the seats there near you. You can fill that out, drop it in the offering basket when you're leaving here in a few moments. And uh, as the staff meets together tomorrow, they will be praying for you. And, uh, and we would love to pray for anything that you need us to pray for. The next thing is this little QR code to somewhere around you, on the seat somewhere near you. Uh, and uh, we'd like for you to scan that. When you scan it, they'll carry you to several links. One of those links is a place where you can offer a prayer request. And that'll come in to our staff, and we will pray for you as we are uh, meeting together uh, in, in our staff meeting. We also want to share with you, if you would like to um, give online, you can do that by following this link and it'll, uh, that's on the QR code, and it can get you straight to the give, uh, giving link. And then if you brought an offering with you, we, you can drop your offering in the baskets here in a few moments when you're leaving uh, the service. Uh, and you can also, uh, on, through this QR code, you can also get to the um, sermon notes. So if you would like to do that, we encourage you to do that. Uh, we will have several prayer requests that have come in to us since uh, last week. We want to share with you uh, those requests. We want to, uh, you know, 
I was going to tell y'all that Frank Friedman was out of the hospital, but he showed up. He got out of the hospital a couple of days, and he showed up today. So uh, that's great news. Uh, so, but continue to pray for Frank's healing and Dot's patience, uh, and uh, that lift them up. Uh, Blair Diamond had an accident and uh, injured his hand, and he's looking at possible surgery on his hand. So be in prayer for Bl uh, Blair. He's also here today. Uh, you'll see his hand all wrapped up, but we're glad that he's able to be here, but be in prayer for him. Pat Lutz fell uh, and has broken her pelvis, and she is in the hospital, and they are figuring out what to do to help her out uh, and how they're going to treat that. Be in prayer for Ed as he's caring for her and the medical personnel that's there figuring all that out. Be in prayer for Bill Braxton. Bill is, uh, is in the hospital and needs our prayer, so continue to lift Bill up. We invite you to be praying for the prayer walk. You'll hear more about that in a little bit, and also be praying for our nation because our nation stands in need of prayer all the time. So let us continue to pray for our nation. Um, and then um, I know that uh, Sam and Natalie uh, mentioned VBS. Uh, I just want to share with you the importance of volunteering for Vacation Bible School. There's one thing this church will never do. This church will never set a limit on how many kids can come. Uh, and uh, we're always going to open the doors to every child that can come to Vacation Bible School. However, we need help with volunteers. And if we don't have enough volunteers to do Vacation Bible School, since we can't tell the, you know, we're not going to limit the number of kids that can come, we may have to cancel Vacation Bible School. I just want to be up front with you. Uh, because, you know, 20 people can handle 200 kids. Uh, so uh, I really want to invite you and encourage you to sign up and help out. There are a host of ways that you can do that. Um, I'm not, and I don't want you to hear that as I'm trying to guilt anybody into signing out, signing up. I just want you to know where we're at, because it's very important that we have enough volunteers to take care of all the children that usually come. And this year, being this our year of uh, having skipped last year because of uh, COVID, we don't know how many kids are going to get this year. I mean, we could be flooded with children. So we uh, we usually have around 200 children in a regular year. So I don't know what this year is going to be. Everybody can help out in some way uh, with Vacation Bible School. Um, there are sign-up sheets right outside, and be sure to sign up today. Uh, soon we're going to start registering the children for VBS too, so be in prayer for that as we get ready to register the children, get them ready to come, and uh, do that early registration for that. There's no cost. All you have to do is show up. That's it. Uh, and for, for volunteers, there's no pay. All you have to do is show up. So, all right? Uh, so we invite you to be a part of that. If you'd like to join me around the altar for a time of prayer, I'd love for you to do that. Just slip out of your seats. Come join me. There's plenty of room around the altar for you. Uh, will you pray with me? Well, good morning, Father. Thank you so much that we can gather here in this place and we can lift up all of these requests to you. I thank you that we can not only come to you with our needs, but we can come to you with our celebrations. We can come to you with thanksgiving for all that you do and how much you always, always are there for us. So we give you thanks, Father. We thank you that we can uh, always know that you hear us when we talk to you. We thank you that we can always, always come to you with wherever we are in our lives. We thank you, Father, that you've placed us all here in this community for this time. We thank you that we have the opportunity to share your love in this community and to partner with all the other churches in this community to to lift up the gospel and to share the good news about Jesus Christ with, the, with this community. We thank you, Father, for how much you do love us. And we pray, Father, that we would, we would, realize, we would realize our responsibility and our privilege as Christ followers to tell people about a love that they may never have experienced before. 
a love of a heavenly father that goes deeper than anything that they have ever known. I pray for this community, Father. I pray that as we all, as a community, are going through so many adjustments in life right now and so many things that are happening around us, I just pray that you would remind us again that you are with us. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would open more doors for us as a church family to minister to people. I pray, Heavenly Father, that we would know we would know the needs that you want us to meet. And God, I pray that you would open the doors for us to meet them, Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father, that we would never forget your mercy and your love and your grace. Lord, you are the first and the greatest giver. Everything we have comes from you. We pause right now to give you thanks. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. At this time, we want to dismiss our youth to go find Sam out in the atrium to go to your uh, life groups. And as we're doing that, I do also want to share with you one other thing before Chrissy and the worship team sing. We've had the great privilege for the last several months to do uh, a 1030 mask required service. And we have been uh, very privileged and honored to be able to offer that service. Um, at this time, uh, we have, uh, this will, today will be the last Sunday for that service with all the uh, vaccinations that are available for everybody and uh, a lot of folks that have been able to use that service are now coming to one of our other services. And so at this time, we're going to be, today will be our last time for that service at this time. So uh, first, thank you for supporting us as the staff was running all over the place to support that service and running back between the services. And they weren't able to speak to you as they normally do. So thank you for your patience with that. But we are, uh, I just want to let you all know that today will be the last service for, last time for that service. Uh, so speaking of services, let's continue in this one. Grandma used to pray out loud By her bed every night To me it sounded like mumbling Like she was out of her mind She said, hun, this kind of praying Is what saved my life You ought to try it sometime Now I know she was right she was talking to Jesus She was talking to Jesus She'd been talking to Jesus For all of her life Mama used to drag me to church Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights Dress pants and a pretty shirt Boy, I put up a fight She said, one day you'll thank me For having God in your life And yeah, I know she was right Yeah, my mama was right Cause talking to Jesus She got me talking to Jesus She got me talking to Jesus my mama was right Cause now I'm talking to Jesus Yeah, I love talking to Jesus And I'll be talking to Jesus For the rest of my life And what a friend we have in Jesus What a friend we have in Jesus What a friend we have in Jesus Whoa. And what a friend we have in Jesus What a friend we have in Jesus What a friend we have in Jesus Whoa. And I've got two of my own now I'm trying to raise them upright My youngest is 19 I remember what that was like
like Trying to deal with all the drama Trying to figure out the questions in life And I've been looking for a way to show him How to make it all right Then he walked in my room While I was saying my prayers the other night He said I'll come back later I can tell you've got a lot on your mind I said it's not an interruption You couldn't have picked a better time Cause I was just talking to Jesus Come over and give it a try We started talking to Jesus We started talking to Jesus We started talking to Jesus Whoa. And now he's talking to Jesus Thank God he's talking to Jesus I hope he's talking to Jesus For the rest of his life What a friend we have in Jesus what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, and what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, there's no wrong way to do it. There's no bad to start it doesn't have to sound pretty just tell him what's on your heart cuz it's not a religion it's more like a friendship just talk to your father like you are his kid just start talking to Jesus just start talking to Jesus You can talk to Jesus Whenever you like Just start talking to Jesus Just start talking to Jesus Just keep talking to Jesus For the rest of your life And what a friend we have in Jesus so much for your love that you are always there for us father that we don't have to we don't have to sound like the pope or somebody that it's it seems to be so much more holy than we are lord that you just want to have a conversation with us lord like the song said you want us to come and talk to you like we are your children because that's exactly what we are and your arms are open for us anytime we we want to share some happy news father that we want to come to you and say thank you lord for that parking space or thank you lord for that unexpected windfall or lord thank you that my child has made a right decision father you are there and you are there when things are tough and Father, like, like we sang earlier, Father, we fight on our knees and we just come to you in prayer. And Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for the awesome opportunity we have as parents to, to model a relationship with you, to show our kids how to talk to you. And we thank you that just, Father, that you just care about everything in our lives. 
You are an amazing Father. You are an amazing God. We love you so much. We thank you for this time we've been able to come together and worship. We thank you now for the words you've put on the heart of our pastor. Father, I just ask that every person that will hear this sermon today, Lord, will be touched, will be encouraged, will be challenged, Lord, to, to love you in a better and in closer and more profound way. Father, we give you all the glory in your son's precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. That is a beautiful song. I'm, I think I've heard it before, but I don't remember if I have or not. So I, I'd like to hear it again, though. Uh, just talking to Jesus. That's all prayer is. That's what we've been, we've been talking about the last three weeks is that's all that prayer is, is just talking to Jesus. And I encourage you to do it on a regular basis. I do my best to do it on a regular basis myself. And I encourage you to do the same thing. Prayer works. I'm reminded of a story about a pastor. <clears throat> he once asked his church to pray that God would shut down a neighborhood bar. And the whole church, they gathered one evening for prayer. And as they gathered for this prayer meeting... They were pleading for God to get rid of this bar that, where there was so much trouble and, and so much evil happening there. And, and they, they would just pray it all over it and uh, that God would get rid of it. Well, a few weeks later, lightning struck the bar and it burned down. Well, the, uh, having heard about the church's prayer crusade, the bar owner promptly sued the church. And when the court date finally arrived, the bar owner passionately argued that, that God struck his bar with lightning because of the church members' prayers. The pastor, he kind of backtracked a little bit. He, he was kind of brushing off these accusations. He, he admitted that the church pray, prayed, but he also admitted and affirmed that no one in his congregation really expected anything to happen. The judge leaned back in his chair and after a few moments of thinking, he, he, he came with a mix of amusement and perplexity. And finally he spoke, he said, I can't believe what I'm hearing. Right in front of me is a bar owner who believes in the power of prayer and a pastor who doesn't. You know, um, <clears throat> one of the guys I really like to listen to, you've heard me talk about him before, Craig Groeschel. Uh, he's a pastor out in Oklahoma. He has a uh, book out, many books out, but one of them is called The Christian Atheist. And in that book he says this, There are so many people who believe in God, but they don't believe in prayer. They may even claim that prayer works, but their actions say otherwise. Some Christ followers rarely pray, and when they do, they don't expect anything to change. Well, I just want to ask you, for the, if, if for no other time, I want to ask you for the length of time that I'm going to be speaking to think about that question. Do, when you pray, do you really expect anything to change? When you pray, do you pray expecting that God is not only going to hear your prayer, but that He's going to work through and in the situation that you're praying about? Do you believe that God can answer your prayer, and do you pray with expectation that He will? Now, He might not answer. I'm going to say this again. I've said it before. He might not answer it the way you want Him to, but he will answer it the way that is best for you. You need to hear that. Matter of fact, how many of you know this coming Thursday is National Day of Prayer? Anybody know that? Yeah. Well, there are different events that happen. One, events, uh, one of the events is over at Alyssa's outside there. There's going to be a, a time of folks set up where people can come by. You can just drop in. People will pray for you. And whenever we're, you know, I'm, I'm going to participate in it. I know Melissa's going to participate in it. Some others maybe are going to do that. And whenever we're doing that, the question is, are we praying just to say words so people can say, oh, that's so nice you're, you're doing that for the National Day of Prayer. Are, you, are we praying with expectancy? Well, I'm praying with expectancy. 
I pray believing God is going to do what is best and that he can bring the help that we need in the time that we need it. And I pray expecting him to answer my prayer. How are you praying? See, the truth is that if we don't believe in the power of prayer and that God will answer our prayers, then why pray? If you don't believe it's going to happen, if you don't believe he's going to answer your prayer, if you don't believe that when you seek his will, he's going to bring you his will, then why talk to him about anything? See, I believe that God would have us to understand that prayer does work. I believe it does. I believe that that we should pray with the expectation that God is going to hear our prayers and He's going to answer them according to His will the way He sees best. See, we get confused. Well, I can't speak for you, but I can speak for me. I get confused sometimes when God doesn't answer my prayer the way I think he ought to answer it. And then he doesn't give me an explanation as to why. Who am I to expect the creator of the everything to answer my why? Why should I expect him to tell me the whole picture. You know why he doesn't give me the whole picture? I'm going to tell you why he doesn't give me the whole picture. Because he knows me and I would try to run too far ahead of him. If he gave me the whole picture about what, how something was going to turn out or, or, or how it was going to go down in the future, what I would do is I would say, okay, this is his will, so I'm going to try to hurry it along. You see, if he only, he only asked me to trust him with the next step, And when he asks me to trust him with the next step, I'm doing what the Bible says. I am walking by faith, not by sight. If he told me the end game, guess what I would be doing? I would not be trusting him. I would be trying to get to the end game, whatever it is for him. Does that make sense to you? That's how it works for me. I mean, how many of you use GPS on your phones? Any of y'all? Okay. Whew. I was worried there for a second. All right. Uh, I was thinking I was the only one who needed help with directions. All right. Uh, I use the GPS on my phone, and I'll punch in. And, and on one of the, the programs, I think it's MapQuest, that, I, that it'll do this. You punch in, it'll give you several options about where you're going to go. You can go this way, and option one is always the fastest. Option two is the Next to the fastest, option three is the slowest. I never pick three. And the only reason I'll pick two is if MapQuest has it wrong, and I know better. But most of the time, I pick one. Do you know why I pick one? Because it's the fastest way to get to where I'm going. And if God were to tell me his, his will way out here, I would pick the fastest way to get there, and I would miss a whole lot of what he needs to teach me before I get there. So today, I want to talk to us a little bit about this prayer walk that's going to happen this afternoon. And while I'm going to be talking about the prayer walk, it doesn't just pertain to the prayer walk. I want to share with you some what I think some vital information is about the walk, but also about prayer. First off, the first thing I want to share with you is the purpose. I want to, how many of you remember the story of Joshua and the Battle of Jericho? Uh, if you've never read it, you might have heard Elvis's song about Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho. You know, it's a great song. I'm not going to sing it, but it's, he, he does a better job than I do. Uh, but it, the, the, uh, Joshua was leading, just to give you a little uh, summary, Joshua was leading the Israelites into the, their, their first battle in the Promised Land. They had crossed over the Jordan. They're in the Promised Land. They're going to battle. They've got to go and defeat the enemy of Israel. And so they go in to get ready to do that. And they come to this place called Jericho. Jericho is a very well-fortified city. High walls, hard to get to. You know, if you don't come through the gates, hard to get to, you can't get over the wall. It's just not going to happen. <clears throat> and so we have two armies. We have 
The, the army in Jericho, which is a well-trained army, an army trained to defend Jericho, an army that has been tested in battle, an army that knew what it was to fight. And then we have the Israelites, first-generation freed slaves. That's what they are. Their parents, and for some of them, their grandparents, were slaves over in Israel. And here, they, I mean, these were, you know, they had wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. They hadn't been in an army. They hadn't, they hadn't been taught to fight. They didn't know battle tactics. And yet God said, you got to go in, you're going to take this land. But the good news is, God said, I'm going to give you the land, and I'm going to give you the victory as long as you trust me. So God gave Joshua this very unique and strange battle plan. He said, Joshua... I want you to walk around the city. Get, get, get the Israelites together and just make a lap. Make a lap and then go take a nap. I mean, that's, that's what you need to do. That's all you need to do. And then the next day, God said, make a lap. And he did this for six days. And then God said, on the seventh day, I want you to make seven laps. I want you to make these laps. And then at the end of these laps, I want you to, you know, blow these horns and, and, and all this stuff. And then watch what happens. On the last day, they made the seven laps. They blew the horn. And suddenly, these walls that they couldn't get over fell down. And they just walked into the city. And brought, God brought victory to them. Now, you know what I would have done had I been Joshua. And God had told me, oh, you know, you're going to walk around the se- you're gonna walk around it seven times. And blow these horns. And the walls are going to fall. You know what I would have done on the first day? I wouldn't have wasted my time with the other six. I would have just went ahead and made the laps. I believe what was happening when they were making the laps, God was showing them that he's got this. He he was showing them. He he first wanted them to see the magnitude of the problem that was before them. And then secondly, he was asking them to take the steps to trust him to get to the end so that they could see him bring victory. See, by talking to God and by praying, Joshua was able to lead the Israelites into a seemingly impossible situation. I've never had the honor to serve in the military. I've wanted to and never had the honor to do that. So if we, you know, if the... if. There's a place where they need someone to go in as, uh, as, uh, and to help fight for America. I'm willing to do that, but I'm not the best candidate. You know why I'm not the best candidate? Never been trained. Never been to war. Never been trained to go to war. Never been trained battle tactics. Never been trained any of that stuff. So, you know, if, you, if, you, if I were to, you know, <laughs> I would not be the best one to sin. I'd be willing but I'd get over here and I'd wonder, okay, what do we do next? It's a bad guy. We've got to take care of him. How do we handle that? I, I wouldn't have a battle plan. And, and so if you sent me into this, into this, uh, this uh, battle situation, I would not know what to do next. Joshua didn't know what to do next. All he was doing is taking the next step. He was trusting his commander, which was God, to lead them in this victory. And as Joshua and the Israelites, they they were facing this impossible situation. That's the way it would look for me if I went into battle. It would look like an impossible situation. And they were facing this impossible situation. And as Joshua and the Israelites followed God's plan... They were able to take down these, this stronghold, this wall, and defeat the enemy. You see, just as Joshua and the Israelites circled Jericho and made step after step after step in faith, I believe it's vital that we start stepping out in faith. And I believe it's vital that we start praying circles around the strongholds in our lives. 
that need to fall down. I believe it's vital we start praying circles around these strongholds so that they would no longer be a, a barrier between us and God or so they, they would no longer be a barrier between us and God's will and we would just start praying circles around those strongholds, trusting God to bring them down and expecting God to bring them down. So what's the stronghold in your life? That you need to pray a circle around. What's the stronghold in the church? What, what is blocking us from stepping out in faith and doing some things that God wants us to do as a church? I mean, are there strongholds that are, that are keeping us from being in the center of God's will as a church and doing things He's calling us to do? What are the strongholds in your family? What are some barriers that are there that you need to pray that God would bring down in your family? What are some strongholds in our community that we need to be praying circles around? And we need to begin praying circles around all of this stuff. What are they? See, I believe that we need to begin trusting God to tear down these walls that separate us from Him and His will. See, what, what I'd encourage us to do, and you know, I started to put this up on the screen, but I don't know how to do it, <clears throat> so I didn't do it. I started to have a whiteboard in here to give you this illustration. Forgot the whiteboard. So, uh, y'all just going to have to work with me on this. We're going to start at, I want you to imagine a circle just big enough for you to stand in. And that's where you need to stand in that circle, and that's the, the circle you need to be in. And you need to start praying for God to break down the strongholds in your own life. You need to start with you. I need to start with me in this circle that we're in right now. And that God is going to take down whatever stronghold that is blocking us from being in the center of His will. That's where it starts. It doesn't start with me praying, oh God, Stan needs help. And you need, to, you need to work on Stan because he needs a lot of help, God. And you know, just draw the circle around Stan. No. I need the help first. I need to pray for me. Not because I'm selfish, but because I need to get centered in God's will. And I need, the, I need, I need to pray circles around me. And that God's going to tear down whatever stronghold is keeping me from being in His will. So imagine... If I were creative enough, it'd be on the screen or on a whiteboard. Imagine a bigger circle. And in that bigger circle is your family. So you start with you. And then you step out into this next circle. These circles keep getting bigger as they're going out. And in this next circle that's around you, that's your family. And what are some strongholds that are keeping your, that's, that's, that's coming up against your family? What are some strongholds in your family that is keeping you from the will of God, your family from the will of God? What are those strongholds that you're in the middle, that, 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 that keep putting up barriers so that your family cannot be the family it needs to be. What do you need to pray about? And then you go from the next circle to me is your church. So it starts with you, goes to your family, goes to your church. And the reason I go to the church first is because in the church, is where, this is where we're supposed to come and we're supposed to get charged up to go out. This is not the only place that we're supposed to talk about God or hear about God or learn from God. This is just a place where we do that. It starts in your house. It starts in your personal life where you talk to God and you hear from Him. This is reinforcement. We talked about it the other week. You have 936 weeks from the time your child is born until your child hits 18 to speak into that child's life as, as their parent. And if, if, the, if you were to have your kid here every Sunday morning, every Wednesday night, and never, ever, ever miss for 18 years, we would have less than 17 weeks to speak into your child's life. Total. 
put all those hours together. See, it's up to you. The, see, discipleship does not begin at the church. It begins in the home. It's reinforced in the church. But you pray about what's going on in the church and how can we break down strongholds in the church that's keeping us as a church from being everything God wants us to be. And maybe strongholds we don't even see. So it starts with you, goes to your family, goes to your church. The next, it, you know, if you want to draw a little bigger circle, it's in your neighborhood where you're living. You have the greatest ability to impact your neighborhood because that's where you are. What are the strongholds, the barriers in your neighborhood that are keeping people from hearing the gospel? And then it goes from your neighborhood, goes out into your community. And then it goes from your community to your county. And from your county to your state. From your state to the nation. From the nation to the world. And the circles just keep getting bigger. But the smallest circle starts in your life. So I'd encourage you just draw a circle around yourself and start with you. Praying for God to bring down the strongholds. It's keeping you from His will. And two weeks ago, we, we looked at how to pray. Two weeks ago, we explored what prayer is and what it's not. And then what prayer, you know, we, we looked at how to pray. We saw there's no set way to pray. We saw there's no set position to pray in. You know, there, you, know you can pray driving your truck or on your knees at the altar. And God still hears them both. If you don't have a truck, I'm sorry. You can, <laughs> you can drive in your car. You know, you can pray in your car. Listen, I pray a lot on the back of my motorcycle. You know why? Because there's some drivers that don't pay attention to people on their motorcycles. So uh, it increases my prayer life when I drive my bike. So, uh, you know, so, you know I, I pray a lot there. But, you know, you, you, wherever you are, God can hear you. We talked about that. We talked about how prayer is an integral part of our relationship with God. And therefore, we need to, be, we, we need to realize we're as, we are free to pray to God any way we wish, any position we're in, and just let it out and talk to Him. I had the joy of being with my son and his family for a couple of days, you know, Friday and Saturday. I was working on a project with him, and he and I had a lot of time to talk. And we talked about not, not just the project we were working on, we talked about life, and we talked about other things. And I had a chance as a father of a... 31-year-old is speaking to his life again and, and just talk to him. Do you know how much joy I got just talking to my son? He and I had a whole day, just he and I. And that's unusual. We don't get that often. And he just spoke to me. I spoke to him. And, and, and it, part of the, some of the conversation wasn't easy conversation. But it was good conversation. So you can talk to God however you want to. He hears you. We saw how God does not want us to merely repeat meaningless words. He wants us, He wants to hear what's in our hearts. And, and we looked at we looked at tools like Acts, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. That's one tool. We looked at another tool about the Lord, how you use the Lord's Prayer. And it, both of those are two tools that give us a pattern for how we pray and how we can pray. And then last week we, we talked about Daniel and how he prayed no matter what. He didn't give up and and we, we looked at how prayer influenced his outlook on life. And, and we also looked at how prayer influenced his character. And we looked at how prayer kept Daniel from compromising when it would have been so easy to compromise. We saw how prayer affected the outcome of Daniel's life and how he was protected when he was thrown into the lion's den. And, and we ended that message by being challenged to dare to be a Daniel. So today, I want to talk to us about how to apply what we've been talking about and learning about prayer. See, that's our purpose in learning to pray. It, 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 we need to put into practice what we have been learning about in theory. 
See, today we're going to look at just how to do that. And what, so I want to look at what's our plan that, that uh, we're looking at. So the first plan is the prayer walk. And I want to talk to you about that. The plan is the prayer walk. And we have marked out a route that begins and ends here at the church. It's a very simple route. We're going to leave the church. We're going to go down towards five points, hang a right at five points. We're going to walk straight up Shemukla. Whenever we get to the road, the road that turns in front of the high school, I can't remember what it is. Y'all, y'all know where the high school is. So. But you turn in front, go in front of the high school, and then we're going to go over to West Spencerfield and walk down, turn to the right and walk down to 90. When we get to 90, we're going to turn down 90 and turn to the right and come all the way back down to Woodbine. And then we're going to turn down Woodbine and end up here. That's the whole route. It's 9.3 miles. I know it's a long route, but I believe in you. I believe in you. That's the route. And there are three ways that you can participate in this route. Well, there's four. I'll give you the fourth one if I think about it in a minute. But three ways for sure. The first way is this. The first way is you can walk the whole route. And all we're going to be doing is walking and and we're going to be walking and praying. That doesn't mean we're going to be walking like that. Because have you seen the traffic on Woodbine? It's probably not a good idea to pray like this when you're walking on Woodbine. All right? So we're going to walk and pray. And and whatever God inspires you to pray about is what you're going to pray about. We'll visit a little bit for those who are walking together, but we'll pray too. So you can walk the route with us and pray with us. Another way you can do that is you can, you, know, you might not feel like you can walk the whole route, but you'll join us along the route. You may walk a little ways on the route. And you can join us at any point and you can stop at any point. I'm going to tell you like I tell my kids, you grown, you can make that decision. The other way you can be a part of this is you can meet us and pray at a station. We've got 27 stations. There, there, there are two sign-up sheets uh, right outside here where you can sign up at a station. But you can meet us and pray at any one of these stations. There are 27 different ones. At different ones, we're praying about different things. And, and, and uh, you know, we're going to be praying over neighborhoods. And there's a whole bunch more neighborhoods since I made this list we need to pray over. So just jo- Include them wherever you're standing and pray over those neighborhoods. We're going to be, uh, you know, if your kids go to a particular school in that route, or, you know, it doesn't matter if they go to a particular school, but pray for them whatever school they go to. You can join us at one of the prayers, prayer areas for a school. If you have a business or work in a business along that route, or know someone who has a business along that route, stop and pray for them. At that particular, at these particular stations. And then you may want to just meet and pray for the churches in our area. And at about 315, that's when we plan on being at the Pace Assembly at their flagpoles. We're, you know, right out in front. We're going to be there about roughly about 315. We're going to be praying for all the churches in our area. And if you look out there on the prayer stations, they have prayer times. You don't just get over there and wait on us to come. You must have a lot of time to kill if you're going to do that. Uh, But you you just go, and at each station, at each station, it has a time, and we're pretty close to that time. Around that time, we'll be hitting that station. And we invite you to come, and and, uh, like I said, can't walk with us, join us at a station. Pick one or ten, okay? We'd love to have you be a part of that. So it's all your choice. Oh, there's another way. For those who don't feel like you can either meet us at a station or do any of the walk, you can pray at home and God We'll hear you. And we'd encourage you to pray for the walkers. And pray for the station at the different stations. You need a copy of the stations, I'll get you a copy. And you'll know what's going on. And so, the, and as I said, those who are walking along the route, you'll, you just pray as you feel prompted to do so by the Holy Spirit. And those who choose to meet at a certain station along the way, guess what? You don't even have to really figure out what you're going to pray for at that station because we have these handy-dandy guides that we're going to hand out at each station. And if you choose to pray at a station, we're going to come up, and we're not going to stop there. We're going to come up, and we're going to hand you the list. I'll hand you what you need to pray about and suggested things to pray about at that station, and the walkers are going to keep going because there may be some stations that aren't manned, and we need to be there and pray at those stations. So if you're at that station, we're going to hand this off to you, give you a high five, and keep going. 
And we've got these guides for churches, for businesses, for schools, and for neighborhoods. So you may get, at, like uh, over the one near the, uh, Dixon and what's the middle school? I can't remember the middle school. Sims, thank you. Thank you. For the one over there, you'll get one for the neighborhood and for the school. So you'll get these guides that are there. And we'll help you out. If you want to get yours early, just see me after church. I'll get you a copy early. But this will give you what you can pray for whenever you're there. See, we're, and, and, and that's, this is a guide. This is not the law. Feel free to pray any way you would like to. But that is a guide to help you where you pray. And I want you to know this. We're not trying to leave anyone or any area out. Uh, it'd be, you know, we could walk all the way around Santa Rosa County, but we couldn't do it in the afternoon. <laughs> So this signifies, we're, we're claiming all of Santa Rosa County. We're, we're claiming all of our area and all of our communities with this nine-mile walk. So we're, it's not confined to just what's happened in the nine miles area, but it's con, it, it goes all the way out to our whole community. So you're invited to pray as you feel led, even if it's not included in that geographical area. The next thing I want to share with you is the outcome. There's a purpose, we have a plan, and we have an outcome. This is the last thing I want to talk to you about today. And in this outcome, it says this. Think of what this scripture says in James 5, 16. This is the only verse of scripture. This is very unusual. I know I have, usually have several verses. Only verse of scripture I'm using today. It says, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is what? Powerful and what? Effective. And you might say, well, Jimmy, <laughs> i got some stuff in my life. I'm not a righteous person. I want to ask you this. Have you accepted Christ as your Savior? Do you believe that He forgave you? And do, are you doing your best to live for Him? You've got your qualifications. Confess our sins. Pray for each other. And we need to pray for healing. There's some folks in my lifetime, I've, I've lived through a lot of things in my 57 years. I've lived through a nation that's been in riots before and we're back at it again. I lived through a time in this nation when all kinds of horrible things were happening. Anybody remember the gas lines in the late 70s? I remember them. And I was only a teenager. There's a lot of things we lived through, a lot of tough times. And we're back in some tough times and we need to pray for the healing of this nation. But guess where it starts? Where does it start? What's the smallest circle? Everybody take your finger and do this and turn it in like this. That's where it starts. We pray for healing and it starts out and goes out all the way into this nation. See, the Christ followers' most powerful resource is our communion with God in prayer. The results are often greater than we thought were possible. See, some people see prayer as a last result when all else fails. And that approach is backwards. Prayer should not be the last thing we do. Prayer should be the first thing that we do. Because when we talk to God first, we're trusting Him with whatever's going to be last. See, God's power is infinitely greater than our power. And it only makes sense that we rely on His power. Especially because God encourages us to do just that. So what do we hope to accomplish? What are some outcomes that we hope to see with this prayer walk and, and by this emphasis on prayer for these last three weeks, what are we wanting to do? I want to give you what I want our outcomes to be and what I hope we accomplish. The first thing is this. I want us to give up time and pick up prayer. Let 
We need to give up a little time in our lives and pick up more praying. The second thing is we need to begin to understand that prayer should become our first response, not our last resort. That's what we need to remember. Prayer should be our first response, not the last thing that we do. What do I hope for the outcomes to be? I hope we start praying individually more. And spend time, my goal is for us to focus on spending time in concentrated prayer and then spend time in concentrated prayer for something specific. What other outcome do I hope we have? I want us to pray corporately. That means together. Spend time praying together as a church family. This is going to help build unity in the body. And I, I'm thankful we, this, this church is, is really doing you know, well spiritually in a lot of ways right now. We, we have a team of leaders that are willing to, to listen to each other and focus on a, an outcome that we come together to. And we're, you know, we, have, we have a great deal of unity here. But you know, guess what? I believe Satan would like nothing more than to drive a dividing wall up here. We're going to pray that Satan will not do that. Amen? Build unity by focusing on one purpose together, by praying together. And the last thing, the last outcome I hope we get is we're going to pray expectantly. Expecting God to do a great work in our community. Listen, I'm not inviting you to do a three, a 9.3 mile walk just so you'll get your exercise today. I'm inviting you to be a part of the prayer walk and to be a part of this prayer time this afternoon. Expecting God to do a work in this community. Listen, they're, they're building houses down here and God only knows, and I mean mean that seriously, where all these people are coming from. I don't know where they're coming from. They keep showing up, buying houses. And out of all these people that keep buying all these houses, you know, we got thousands of houses that are already approved. They're already on the books to be built. How many of those thousands of houses are going to bring in thousands and thousands of people? Listen, how many of those people know Jesus? We don't know. So I want to pray expectantly that they'll come to know Jesus. I want to pray expectantly that there'll be a revival here. I want to pray expectantly God's going to do a work in this community. I don't want to be like the pastor in the opening story. Where the bartender had more faith and belief in the power of prayer than the pastor did. So I want us to pray, expecting God to do something beyond our wildest dreams or our imagination. I read this quote. I wasn't going to share it because it's about the longest quote I will have ever read to y'all. But it was so powerful as I was looking at it. It came from a guy by the name of Robert Moorhead. And the words will be up on the screen. You can follow along and they're in the, in the notes too. But I, I just want to read this. Listen to what Dr. Moorhead says. He says, I'm part of the fellowship of the unashamed. The die has been cast. I have stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I'm a disciple of his. I won't, back, I won't look back, let up, slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. And my future is secure. I'm finished and done with low living, sight walking, small planning, smooth knees, colorless dreams, tamed visions, mundane talking, cheap living, and dwarfed goals. Man, that's a lot. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotion, plaudits or popularity. I don't have to be right first, tops, recognized, praised, regarded, or rewarded. I now live by faith, lean on His presence, walk by patience, lift by prayer, and labor by power. My face is set, my gate is fast, my goal is heaven, my road is narrow, my way is rough, 
My companions are few. My guide reliable. My mission clear. I cannot be balked, compromised, detoured, lured away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of the adversary, negotiate at the table of the enemy, ponder at the pool of popularity, or meander in the maze of mediocrity. This guy's got a way with words. I won't give up, shut up, or let up until I have stayed up, stored up, prayed up, paid up, and preached up for the cause of Christ. I am a disciple of Jesus. I must go till he comes, give till I drop, preach till all know, and work till he stops me. And when he comes for his own, he will have no problem recognizing me. My banner will be clear. I wish I could hear that guy preach. See, we need to be fully sold out to Christ. I want us to pray expecting God to do a work in our community. Here's the outcome that I'm, uh, another part of the outcome I'm expecting. I, I, I want people to become Christ followers. I want to pray that people would come back to God. There are people, a lot of folks in, in our community, they've gotten away from God. They, they've t- they, I've heard, had people tell me that before, and they're trying to get back. Well, you know what? I want to pray that God would show them the path back and, and remind them how much He loves them. I want to pray for marriages to be healed and restored. I want to pray for families to be strengthened. I want to pray for churches to grow and to serve more people. I want to pray that, that those who serve and protect us would also be protected and God's hand would be on them and their families as they are on the front line of protecting us. I want to pray that all the teachers and school workers would be people who would be positively impacting the students. I want to pray for the students to gain wisdom and knowledge and be protected and to respect those over them and to respect their peers. I want to pray for our nation because God knows we need it. We've needed it for a long time. We need it today. I want to pray for our military as they're on the front line of defense to keep... A, the adversary away from us and the enemy away from us. I want to pray that this community would become known as a place where people can encounter God. I want to pray for God to use our church to impact our community in an even greater way. I want to pray for God to lead us as a church as a church family to attempt things only he can accomplish. How many of you know what a BHAG is? That that might be new to somebody. Let me tell you what a BHAG is. A BHAG is a big, hairy, audacious goal. And I want to pray for God to give us a bunch of BHAGs, a bunch of big, hairy, audacious goals, and say, listen, I, it's too big for you to do, Woodbine, but guess what? I can handle it. Just trust me and take the next step. That's what God wants us to do. I want to pray for a great move of God. I said up there in our church, state, nation, and world, but I want to back it up. I want to pray for God to, give a, to have a great big move in us and in our families and then in our church and our community and our nations and our world. See, I believe that we need to have bold faith and we need to begin believing that God's going to do a great work in our community and in our church and in our families and in our personal lives. You know why we can have a big, hairy, audacious goal? The reason we can have a big, hairy, audacious goal is very simple. We have an awesome, powerful God. We have a big, holy, amazing God that can help us to do big things things in this community. We can do big things here if we'll just learn to trust God more and lean on Him. 
Listen, you don't have to wait until the prayer walk to pray. You can start praying right now. And if you do, start now. You can begin now if you've not already started. And when you do that, pray expectantly. You can continue today if you have already begun to pray and believe we have a big, holy, amazing God. who's ready to do a work in his people for his world. Pray, pray, pray. Will you pray with me now? Dear God, I, I just pray that you would help us as a people, God. Help us to know how much you love us. Help us to know how much you care for us. Help us, God, to know that you can always depend upon us. Help us to know that we can always depend on you. God, I pray that we would start praying big, huge prayers, trusting in a huge God to take care of us. I pray, God, that we would lean on you more and that we would trust in you more. I pray, God, that we would pray expectantly, believing you're going to answer prayer and that you're going to do a great work. I pray, God, that we would be known not for, not for anything we do, but for who we love. We'll be known as people who love you and that desire to serve you, God. I pray that as Christ followers, that would be our goal. is to remember we have a big, holy, amazing God who loves us. And maybe some of you who are listening to me right now and you've never experienced the love of God in your life. You've never accepted His love for you, even though He's loved you all along. If that's who you are and you need to uh, trust in God with your life and your heart, th this, this might be the first prayer you've ever prayed. To ask God to come into your heart, it'll be one of the most important. So wherever you are in this room or watching online, wherever you are, I want to invite you to just trust God right now. If you want to begin a relationship with God, you can do that with these four simple words can start your relationship. So just between, just between you and God, pray this simple prayer. The first word to remember is sorry. God, I'm sorry for what I've done wrong. I'm sorry for the sin in my life. I'm sorry I've rejected you up to this point. The next word is please. Please come into my life and save me. Please forgive me of my sins. Please become the Lord of my life. The last word, two words are thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for never giving up on me. Thank you for loving me so much. Father, for those who prayed that prayer for the first time today in a minute, I pray that you would work in their lives in a powerful way. I pray, God, that they would lean on you more. I pray that they would trust you more. I pray that they would pray expectantly, expecting you to hear them, expecting you to answer them always, knowing that you have what's best in mind, and praying that you would be with them with their next steps that they need to take in trusting you. I pray for others who are already Christ followers, Lord, and prayers become something that has just lost its importance. I pray that we would realize the power of prayer. And instead of it being something that we do in passing, may prayer become something that we do with intent, expecting you to hear us and answer our prayer. God, help us to be people of prayer in your name. Amen. As we do each week, this altar is going to be open for a time of prayer. If you'd like to come down here and spend some time, you're welcome to do that. If you want me to pray for you, I'll be glad to do it. Simply get my attention. If you don't get my attention, I won't bother you. But if you would like for me to, I'll be glad to pray with you. I want to invite you. As you're able to please stand as we sing this next song, this altar is open for you. I've carried a burden too long on my own. I wasn't created.
sign-up sheets outside for VBS volunteers but also at the first table you'll find sign-up sheets for the different stations sign up at one of those meet us there and uh, let's pray for our community and our nation if you need uh, help with your ne- next steps in your relationship with Jesus let us know you can email me I am in at woodbinechurch.org I am I in at woodbinechurch.org and if this is your first time to join us or you've been here before and I hadn't met you I would love to visit with you I'll be out in our little family room area here come over here and see me and uh, let's visit for a little bit let me get to know you thank you so much for being here at this time I want to turn it to Brenda to close us out thanks pastor don't forget the prayer walk 1.30 meet us here the second thing is is uh, volunteer appreciation next week so you'll want to come and celebrate with us okay Let's pray. Lord, here we are, your kids. We just love you. So just allow us to hear you and allow us to talk to you moment by moment, day by day. We're just your kids, and we love you. So go with us now as we try to touch lives. Let you be glorified. Let us always point to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great day. I run to the Father, fall into grace. I'm done with the high, a breeze into it. 
my heart found a surgeon, my soul found a friend, so I run to the Father again and again.